Hey everybody, Mr. Stewart here, and uh, I thought I would revise the screencast on percent error calculation for assignment number one. So it appeared as though uh, the video that went up uh, had no sound um, and also carried over from an older simulation. So this is a, a revision. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the sample spreadsheet. So this might look characteristic of something that you were setting up today in class. So this video is not really about the initial stages of setting up um, the spreadsheet. Okay, but uh, as you can see down here, the tab at the bottom of my spreadsheet is labeled three tails simulation. Okay, so throughout this column here, what I'm looking for is if a one from a coin toss designates a tail, okay, then I'm really looking for a sum of three, as you can see here. And then here's another one, and so on and so forth. If I go down the list, I'm looking for sums of three. And there's two more. Okay. So what I'm asking you to do is to count out or to count off the number of threes that are going to occur in those 200 trials, okay? So if we scroll down here towards the bottom where I have uh, collected some of the data, okay, after 200 trials, here's what you're gonna see. So from that first run of the experiment, okay, I have 17 tails. Now, you're supposed to be randomizing it 10 times and then counting or keeping track of these 10 different sums. So the easiest way to do that is to use a function known as count if. Okay, so what you'll see here is what we call the range of data that you would like the spreadsheet to look at. So you can see I've highlighted all of the values in that column, which I've called the sum. Okay, over here, this value, the three, okay, this specifies the number you would like the spreadsheet to look for. So in this case, I've asked it to look for threes and it randomized it again. And if I were to go up through this table here, I'd notice there are 29 threes, okay? So over here, what you can see is I have run this experiment 10 times and each time I've recorded the number of uh, times I've seen three tails come up out of 200 trials. Okay, this column here is the probability, okay, which is based on the number I've seen out of 200. So you can see the formula here, okay, and then so on and so forth. Okay, this probability, of course, would be 18 divided by 200, and so on and so on. So the average probability, okay, comes from the average of these. 10 values, and that would then represent the experimental probability. Okay, so what you see to the left here, this is the simulated or the experimental probability. Okay, the theoretical probability you would have calculated that from number one or the first part of the lab. Last but not least is the percent error. Okay, so uh, you do have a formula on your assignment paper, okay? And I guess it's probably a good idea if I do grab the assignment paper. I just want to demonstrate something here for you with that. Okay, so under my assessments, let's see here. Grab a hold of this assignment. So I did provide a formula for percent error. Okay, that was brought out in class a little while back. So I'm just going to scroll through here. And whereabouts are we? Gone too far. Here we go. Okay. So what you'll notice is it's your result, which is the um, experimental probability. Okay, the experimental probability here. The accepted value is the theoretical. All right. And you're going to notice that these vertical bars are here, okay, around what's in the numerator. And if I go back to the spreadsheet, you're going to see that I have in the formula space here, you'll notice ABS, okay, and what that means is absolute, okay, so we're looking for the absolute value, okay. 
Okay. So what that's going to do is if you do get a negative value for percent error, which is totally possible, because if the experimental probability is less than the theoretical, you'll end up with a negative percentage. So the absolute value function simply returns the positive value for the absolute value. So you won't end up with a negative from your calculation. Okay, so you'll have to take note of the formula or its form here as you go into using it in Excel. Okay, now the alternative too is if you're writing it down, if you do calculate it without the absolute value symbols and you do result with a negative, that's fine too, so long as you do then report the percent error as being a positive uh, percentage error. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how to count cells in Excel if you're looking for a specific value. And then down here we have a little bit of information as to how you can go about calculating percentage error.